okay, we've been working with uh, infant data frame uh, examples so far with uh, invalid data scattered throughout the data. And those are encoded uh, using not a numbers. And, uh, and as you've seen in a variety of the plots that we've done, these are not terribly uh, pretty plots because we have gaps in the position data and those gaps were exacerbated when we went to go uh, and compute the derivatives. So it's time to go ahead and uh, close up those gaps. There, and there are a variety of ways to go about doing this. Um, we're actually going to take advantage of uh, a, a, a method that actually exists within data frame called interpolate. And what it will do is it will go through a, uh, an attribute and look for uh, places where data are invalid, and it will do a linear interpolation uh, to fill those values in. And in particular, it will uh, find the, the last uh, valid value uh, before the, the invalid values, and then it'll search until it finds the next valid values. So in between those two, we have our invalid values, and then it will fill those invalid values in with an inter a linear interpolation between, uh, be between those two ends. So we'll, let's go ahead and, and do that. So here we're back to the live uh, example here. I've already started to fill in our, our class uh, definition here. Um, in this particular case, this imputer doesn't actually uh, take any uh, parameters as input, so we don't actually have to store anything. And, and so there's nothing really for the, uh, the constructor to do. So I'm just going to use uh, a keyword called pass within, uh, within Python, and it just, it just says do nothing at all. We're still going to define our fit method. It takes as input uh, self, x, and possibly y. And it'll return self. So again, fit isn't doing anything interesting. And, uh, and then we're also going to create our transform. And that's where the magic will happen. So let's remind ourselves that x is a data frame. So that's, we're adding a little bit of documentation there. There are more formal methods to do documentation in Python. We can talk about that a, a little bit later. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the interpolation. Let me write the code and then we'll talk about it. Turns out to be relatively uh, simple. Uh, so the, what the interpolate method will do for a data frame is it will walk through all of the columns, look for invalid data, and, and, and compute linear interpolation values for all the in, invalid data. What it returns is a new data frame, um, not, not a modified one, but it returns a, a new data frame with all of those interpolated values uh, inserted into the time series. Actually, it doesn't, they don't necessarily have to be time series. They can be any, uh, any vectors. The last thing, of course, we want to return our, our new data frame. And that is the extent of our linear imputer uh, implementation. So this is a case where we're, we're hijacking a function that is provided by pandas and, uh, and creating a pipeline element that, that uses that. So let's go ahead and, and create one. And that constructor takes no parameters. And now we can, can make use of it. So lin impute uh, transform, and we're going to hand it the, the original infant data and store that in infant data seven. All right, and now we can look at the data. And you'll notice now, let's compare that against infant data. 
So infant data originally had NADA numbers for the left wrist and at uh, row two, and those values have now been uh, have, have now been uh, filled in with uh, valid values. And if and if you stare at it long enough, you'll you'll see that this value here sits right in between what we had in row one and what we have uh, in in row three. Okay, let's go ahead and and uh, plot the results that we have here. So let's, we, our time variable already is defined for us, so I won't actually recompute that, but let's pull out the X repaired from infant data seven. We'll pull out left wrist X, and we want the NumPy array. And now let's go ahead and create a, a figure here. Incidentally, uh, when you are doing plotting, uh, all of these, these functions that we're calling, creating a, a figure, uh, generating a plot, all of these have to exist within the same cell. If they don't exist within the same cell, then, uh, then your plot functions are going to be applying to a different figure. So make sure you bind all of those together into the same cell. So let's plot the original data and then we're going to plot the repaired data. Okay, and just so it's, so we're a little bit, we're making a distinction between our original and our repaired data. I'm gonna shift that repaired data down uh, a little bit. And let's also look at just the first 30 seconds of our data set. Okay, so there, there we go. Uh, so green is our repaired, red is our original. And you'll notice now that we have all of our gaps uh, filled in. Uh, there's one there, there's a, a fairly sizable gap there that has now been filled in, uh, et cetera. Now the key, we, we've looked at things like this before in terms of plotting, but the key thing to remember is that uh, the linear interpolation was happening inside of the plotting functions itself. We weren't actually modifying the data. Now we're uh, actually modifying the data before we do the plots. And this is going to be key for uh, one of our next steps. So we'll, um, we'll break the video here and, and then start uh, combining what we've uh, done here with, uh, with our derivative computations.